All right, so for this next part, you're gonna be adding cartoon motion to your ball. So we're gonna be adding squash and stretch. Uh, to do that, we have to apply a different modifier to our ball. Uh, that modifier is called stretch. So to get there, you're gonna, you're gonna click on the second tab over here on the right. It's the box with the little half arc in the middle. Um, so I'm gonna click on that, and this brings us to our modifier list. Um, or it brings us to our modifier panel. So what I can do is I can click on modifier list, and I can type uh, STRE, and that's gonna find stretch for me. So right there, and I'm gonna click on stretch, and then let me show you what it does. So if I go ahead and just grab this arrow and drag up or down on my mouse, you can see that it actually squashes and stretches the ball uh, pretty well. Right? But the problem we have with this is that it's actually squashing and stretching our ball in the middle. Right? And our, our ball isn't going to impact the floor in the middle, it's going to impact the floor on the bottom of the ball. So we have to go ahead and make that correct. So I'll put that back to zero. Let me zoom in on the ball. Okay. Uh, and again, to zoom in, you just hit Z, and that'll zoom in on whatever your selected object is. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this stretch modifier over here on this side. I'm going to click on Gizmo. Now with Gizmo selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit W to switch to my move tool. And I'm going to slide that center point down to the bottom. Now you're going to notice that this box does not occupy the whole ball. And that is going to cause a problem when I start squashing and stretching. So you can see it's not behaving correctly at all. So to fix that, we're just going to hit R and we're going to scale that box up to hold the ball. So now if I squash and stretch, it behaves correctly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and actually go through and uh, keyframe this thing. So I'm going to turn auto key back on. I'm going to scroll down to 15 and let's do like, let's do negative 0.5. Okay. Now with auto key on, I'm going to go ahead and move it up to kind of make that. Whoops, I'm on gizmo. I need to be on stretch. Just the ball is fine. So I'm going to move the ball up a little bit. So it looks like it's impacting the floor. There we go. So it's 0, 1, at 30, I'm going to go ahead and make it 0.2, so it's stretching out a little bit at the top of that jump. Go to 45, what was it, negative 0.5? So I'll do a negative 0.6, so it's not exactly the same. And then again, move the ball back up so it's not hitting the, hit, it's not inside the floor. Go to 60, do a 0.8. Five. We will go ahead and do a negative 0.55 and move it up. And of course, go to frame 90 and make that 0.15. Okay. Now one thing I need to do is adjust the overall size of my floor. Now if I do not turn off auto key, it's going to scale and animate inside of my inside of my animation. So I'm going to turn auto key off and I'm going to hit R and scale it up. That way I'm just adjusting the size of this object without having to worry about it keyframing. Okay. So now if I hit play, we sh we're noticing a problem, right? There's a problem with this in that it is not, it's bounce, it's squashing before it hits the floor. So this is where we actually come in and we're going to be making a, a sleight of hand trick. So at 15, it hits the ground. So I'm going to go to frame 13 and I'm going to make that stretch value zero. Now it happens so fast, it looks like it's hitting the floor. 
go to 45, go back two frames to 43, make that zero and hit enter. And the same with 75, go back to 73. And you could even just go back one frame if you wanted, it would be fine. But now if I hit play, we actually have a much more believable bounce. And that's it for adding the cartoon motion. So the next thing we're going to do is add a camera and render out our finished animation. So I'll be going over that in the next video.